All right, I did a video on fake op amps. Uh, these were OP07 op amps. And um, a viewer commented that he had received some fake op amps from Amazon and had to return them. Um, and it made me worried because I have a box of op amps. And I had bought a bunch of JRC op amps at one time in the past when I was interested in audio stuff. And so I would bought some low noise ones and some high current ones and stuff like that. And then there are the, uh, the ubiquitous ones, which are the JRC 5532s. These are everywhere. And I found a good deal on them once and bought a bunch of them. And uh, it, this is the part number that was the fake ones that he... Uh, that he had located. <laughs> and uh, of course he bought them on Amazon so he got his money back right away. But I've got a bunch of fake 5532s. Yay! <laughs> so I've got a whole, this is my fake bag of uh, OP07s and, uh, and other things now. So um, if you have <clears throat> some uh, uh, they're JRC 5532s or NE 5532s or something or other 5532s. There's a bunch of 5532s. Um, so the first thing to do is to check the plus input and the minus input of the op amp. In a real op amp, there is a diode in this direction and a diode in this direction. So there's two diodes back to back on those two inputs. So if you measure input, if you measure um, the plus and the minus this way, you should measure a diode drop. And if you measure it this way, you should measure a diode drop. Okay, so let's do that. That's pins two and three. Uh, so uh, we'll go over here and over here and uh, we'll take a look at our, uh, our DVM up there and it says 0.745 volts. Okay, and now I will measure it in the opposite direction and in the opposite direction I get 0.745, yay. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at the other op amp that I have. And we will, this one is marked uh, Texas Instrument NE 5532. This one is marked uh, Philips uh, 553, NE 5532. And I will hook this up, plus and minus. And it's open circuit, yay. There's no diodes in these. So the first thing to do is to check pins one and two and see if there's a diode drop. If there's not a diode drop, you have a fake, all right? So the other thing you can do is, um, I have a little test circuit over here, and this is an inverting amplifier, uh, 1K and 1K, so it's a gain of minus one. That's all it is, all right? And I'm gonna pop, pop a part in here. And I have it loaded with 50 ohms, okay? So I am putting uh, three and a half volts peak, uh, peak to peak, uh, three and a half volts peak to peak into 50 ohms. What is that? Uh, 50 ohms, so 3.5 volts. 50 ohms, that's 70 milliamps, okay? So I'm putting 70 milliamps into, into, this, uh, into this capacitor with this NE5532. And uh, looky there, beautiful waveforms. Okay, we have a, a, a rise time measurement here. Uh, we have these lovely, I'm, I'm putting in a square wave. We have these lovely rise times here. You can see that it's slew rate limited like op amps do, but it's 500 and about 575 uh, nanosecond rise times. Looks great, right? This is at 50 kilohertz, all right? All right, so let's put in the, uh, the Chinese op amp. and pop him in, oops. Drop him on the floor here. Let's see. All right, pop him in. And let's see how he does. Blah! <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, so it has a rise time of five microseconds. So about 10 times slower. <laughs> Slew rate's about 10, 10 times slower and it's got this ugly glitch right there. I have no idea what that glitch is. Uh, it's got this ugly glitch here, and it's got a glitch down there, and it's just glitchy and ugly, and it's just it's just terrible. It's non-symmetric. It, it, it's short here and long here. There's just everything wrong about this op amp. It's just bad. <laughs> it's just bad. Um, people say, oh, we'll just save them, use them for something else. No, I'm not gonna save these. No, I'm not gonna use them on anything else. These op amps are bad. <laughs> Anyway, uh, 
just to refresh your memory of what a real op amp is supposed to look like. Pop this one back in. And, uh, yeah, here's a keeper. Oh, uh, that was a, a, a Philips uh, NE, um, any uh, five five three two, and uh, I have I have a, 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 a several uh, good parts. This one is an actual an official JRC part. This is a JRC five five three two, Japan Radio Corporation. They're the ones who invented this part, I believe. And we will pop him in. Yeah, let's take a look at him. Look at that. That was beauty. Joy forever. He's even a little bit faster. He's about 510 nanosecond rise time. So yeah, there you go. Uh, buyer beware. Uh, no matter what you buy from China, it's probably fake. <laughs> one of my viewers said he bought five different things and only one out of five was good. Um, returned the rest or got his money back for the rest or whatever. So it's an easy way to get a bunch of parts. If, so if you just need a bunch of junk parts, um, you just get a whole bunch of parts and you get your money back and get to keep them. <laughs> I guess that's one way to do it. If you don't really care about the uh, really care about the performance. I mean, these op amps do do something. You know, you could use them in classroom environment or something, I suppose. <laughs> I'm not going to build a product out of them, though. Anyway, there you go. Fun stuff for the day. How to uh, how to locate your bad op amps. And in case it wasn't clear about what I was testing at the front end, this particular op amp is a, a bit unusual. It has these two protection diodes on the plus and the minus. Very, very few op amps have that, but the NE5532 does. So it's a very easy, a very easy op amp to check to see if you have a clone or not. Um, it has these two protection diodes from plus to minus and minus to plus. And so it's very easy to check. Um, so anyway, that's what I was talking about.